So, hello, Mark. Grüß dich, Domi. Are, are you ready? I am ready to go. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, now we come to the final session of our uh, day. Um, I'm very excited that you uh, are here again and that we have a session about ABAP Git, one of the uh, most famous ABAP open source projects. Um, Mark is one of the top contributor uh, to this open source project and also uh, other projects. And um, I'm very happy that you are here and we will uh, hear talk from you, uh, talk about ABAP Git, about four mind blowing use cases of ABAP Git. Mark, the stage is yours. All right, let me share. Make over here. Let's see. Oh, make it big. Can you see the presentation? Yeah, fine. All right, excellent. So thanks for having me. Uh, welcome to the final session for today. Um, last year I uh, talked uh, about the easy and introduction things to ABAP Git uh, for beginners, and this year we'll do it a little bit more advanced. Uh, so this is for uh, particularly ABAP developers, uh, especially if you're not so familiar with Git um, and ABAP Git, I'll show you some more uh, interesting use cases. Um, so I sp uh, just a little bit about me. I spent uh, 22 successful years as a chief architect at SAP, you know, consulting for you know, hundreds of customers and uh, then spreading the SAP gospel in VW and HANA product management. And then in 2019, I walked away to build my own uh, one person uh, business. Uh, so now I'm doing some uh, coaching and consulting, uh, but uh, my real passion is ABAP coding. And I'm developing some uh, cool open source tools for SAP Basis and VW mainly. Um, and if you like, you can check them out. Uh, at markbernardtools.com. It's all free if you want to uh, get additional support. Uh, and that's when I uh, you know, charge a little bit of a fee. Um, so early on, I decided to uh, use ABAP Git to, uh, to manage all my code. And uh, you know, since I'm using uh, ABAP Git every day, um, you know, I might as well contribute to it and make it better, right? Uh, so I love giving back to the community this way. And uh, so far I have contributed uh, over 680 uh, commits. And uh, actually since the last conference um, in 2021, um, I have become the lead contributor. Um, and I'm even outpacing Lars uh, who invented the whole thing. Um, he's focusing a bit more on uh, exorcism and his uh, fancy ABAP Lint and Transpiler activities. Uh, so I spent more time on uh, the actual ABAP Git code. So let's see what we have today. Um, this is the little funny disclaimer I put up front um, that this is all uh, entirely uh, fictitious and uh, some of the similarities might be purely co coincidental. Um, some things uh, might have happened to me uh, or might not have happened to me. Um, yeah, the first scenario, uh, I called it uh, coding on the fly, um, literally. And uh, it's uh, about a, um, a nice scenario. Um, so think about it, you're a developer of a, a brand new solution, and then a customer calls you and says, uh, yeah, I really love it. I would love to sign a, a contract with you, uh, but we need like one more thing. And actually, we need it by tomorrow because our boss wants to sign it um, very quickly. Um, now, here's the problem. You're actually in North America and the customer is in Europe. Um, so how on earth are you going to do this? Uh, especially since there's uh, you know, no internet on the plane, you know, maintaining SAP systems uh, or Wi-Fi on the plane, that doesn't really uh, work that well. And the customer doesn't even have uh, internet as well. So here's the challenge. Uh, can you get the job done, right? Um, develop the whole thing um, you know, in a very short time, uh, bring it to the customer and then get it installed at the customer side, although they have no um, you know, internet. Um, so here's what you need to do it. Um, you need a laptop with an ABAP Docker image, right? That's how you uh, can develop the whole thing while you're sitting on a plane. Um, you have your own little ABAP um, system on your laptop and uh, you install ABAP Git there to bring all the code into your Docker image. Insta uh, you can uh, sit on the plane 
Um, maybe you get a little bit of sleep if you're coding fast enough. Um, and at the end, you'll just download the whole thing onto your speed stick and bring it to the customer system. So let's see um, how we're doing this um, in a demo. Um, we have a, uh, tried to <laughs> come up with a scenario of what kind of feature I wanted to develop. And uh, literally, I did it uh, yesterday to figure out what it's going to be. Uh, so I found uh, an Avap repository. Uh, it's open source. Somebody uh, developed this. Anton uh, Sikindin uh, developed a chat program that runs completely on the Avap stack. Um, so let's see how we do this. Um, in my developer system, um, I have Avap git installed and actually brought in this chat program um, from the repository. You can see there's a uh, the URL to it, uh, I made my own fork, and there's a few changes to uh, because I brought it to the latest release level. And uh, now, how uh, on earth am I going to get this to the customer? Um, the customer doesn't have access to the internet uh, on his system. And uh, so therefore, um, I somehow need to download the whole thing and then need an op uh, you know, the option to bring it back to the customer system and there. Uh, import all the coding. You see, there's uh, quite a bunch of things. Doing this manually is not really something you want to do. Um, so the, the easy way is to change this whole repository in a so-called offline repository. Um, if you go to the settings of the repository um, and then to the remote tab, there is a little switch here, a toggle bottom uh, button that uh, lets you change this repository to an offline repository. Uh, you can give it a different chat, uh, different name, have a chat, save the settings. And then when you go back, um, you'll notice that it has changed a little bit up here, different icon for offline with the description. And now instead of push and pull, um, which you have typically in an online scenario, um, have export and import uh, zip file. So after I have done all my uh, changes of this, uh, little app, the feature that the customer really wants. Um, I'm just going to export the whole thing. It doesn't take very long. And let me find a, a nice uh, directory here where you can put all of this stuff. SAP work directory you can tell uh, the convention is just a package name with a timestamp. And that's where I'm going to save um, my um, you know, repository as a zip file. So if we uh, look at this zip file, um, it's actually exactly the same thing that you would find in the online repository. So it has to have a bit.xml file with the uh, metadata of the repository and uh, a source folder, then it, co it contains all the files of the repository as well. Um, there's actually another way to get this. If you're, for example, on GitHub, you can go to the main page of repository and under code, you'd find the download zip that takes you to uh, uh, you know, a similar zip file as a little bit of a different structure, uh, but in the end it contains the same kind of things. Um, in this case, if you do this from here, um, you also have to make sure that you're on the right branch. So if you're downloading the main, if you're on main, uh, the zip file would be something else if you switch to, uh, for example, a different branch here. So, hey, so you uh, put your zip file onto the USB stick, um, and then you come to the customer system, um, different system, and uh, there, you, uh, if the customer doesn't have it, just cut and paste um, the ABAP uh, Git standalone program into a system and uh, start it. And uh, you know, it doesn't have much in there, some other solution offline. Um, you will just create a new offline repository call it uh, ABAP chat here. Um, you could use a different package, chat new, um, uh, maybe even give it a, a, a label for it. And we create a new offline repository package. I don't have to create it yet. Uh, I'll uh, import that. Um, so it, now you see the same thing, but it's still empty. And here we just do the counter for part we import the zip file. I have to find the right directory here, work file, SAP work directory. Uh, sure, I want to access this on my laptop. And uh, here we go. Uh, it shows you all the objects 
just like it is on an online repository um, with all the divs, you see also all new objects, um, nothing created yet. And when I click pull, um, it starts immediately to uh, you know, create all of these objects, uh, activate them, and let's see uh, what happens. Yeah, there is a little bit of a, a warning because there's some fields used in, in dictionary that um, are uh, causing these. Uh, but other than that, I um, have my complete uh, solution in the customer system. And let's see what this actually looks like. Um, if I start this, um, this is what this uh, chat client looks like. Uh, I can uh, you know, register a user, uh, log on, and so this is actually all running out of the uh, out of the app, app program. Um, funny thing is, I can I can chat with myself here. Um, uh, how is the conference going? Uh, so this is the uh, thing, and it pops up in my browser. Um, the, the way the developer uh, explained why he did that is because uh, in in his customer side. Um, they weren't even allowed to uh, install anything else uh, on remote desktops. Uh, so this uh, was an easy and quick way for them uh, to communicate with each other uh, through, uh, through a browser. Uh, funny project, uh, if you like, uh, just, uh, the link is in the presentation, of course. Um, so let's look at the uh, uh, next scenario here. Um, I call it sharing is caring. Um, how do you share uh, code with colleagues? Uh, so the scenario is as follows. Um, you've developed a library, uh, for example, a diff3 library uh, in your AAP development system and uh, your colleague in uh, you know, different departments, CRM, uh, different SAP system has uh, yeah, the similar requirements. He also wants to use this library. So how are you gonna get it to him? Um, and uh, the other thing is also that they are on uh, you know, different releases, uh, you know, there are different basis releases, um, you have different uh, transport routes uh, in your systems, but typically an ERP system wouldn't be on, you know, on the path to CRM, um, so you need a different way to, uh, to connect the two. So uh, the, the challenge as well is that you know, if you make changes to your library, uh, maybe you had add new test cases, uh, unit tests to it, um, or you made, uh, made some new features for the library. Um, these changes, uh, of course, uh, your colleague needs to have as well. Um, and then, uh, you know, there's uh, the company policy to, you know, prohibit external kit servers. So how are we going to do it? Um, can we get the job done? Um, what do we need? To do it. Of course, we're going to put ABAP Git on uh, both the systems in ERP and uh, CRM development systems. And then we need a Git server because we can't uh, access anything outside uh, of the firewall, has to be inside um, our network. Uh, you can actually just install a Git server uh, on uh, some of your uh, machines that you have in house. It doesn't have to be in you know, a public uh, GitHub or GitLab system. Um, and if you don't want to even do that, you could dedicate one of your app, app systems as a Git server. Uh, and again, it's one of those uh, famous projects uh, that Lars has sta started. Um, you can uh, click on this. I'm not going to demo it here, but uh, it's available uh, as a GitHub uh, repository. You can use uh, app, app Git server. Um, as part of an ABAP system. So then uh, the ABAP box will take care of the Git push and pulls and stage activities. Um, and the last part is that you want to use uh, you know, background jobs to automatically um, do the synchronization between the repositories and libraries. So let's have a look in the system. Um, see, get the right one here. Um, this is again my development system. Um, I have here uh, coded uh, this library. Um, this, is a, this is a real thing. Um, if you go to the README, um, you can see that this is a port of the node diff3 implementation. 
I uh, really wanted to have something like this. So I downported or you know, cross ported the JavaScript um, from, from Node to, to ABAP has exactly the same uh, functionality. So if you if you like, it's it's publicly available there yeah, under under Mark Bernard tools. Uh, you can uh, download this class and install it in your own system. But uh, how do we uh, now do the synchronization? Uh, obviously, if you have your own server, um, getting an online ABAP Git repository installed, that's a piece of cake. But uh, I'll show you here how you automatically synchronize those things. Uh, when you go to the repository settings, um, there's a little tab here called background. And uh, this, these different uh, modes tells the, the tell ABAP Git um, in which direction you're actually going to synchronize. So from your ERP system, you want to update the repository uh, on a regular basis. Um, so you could uh, have an automatic push. Um, uh, the, there's two variants to this. You can say auto author. That means that uh, the commits that this background job will create um, are based on the username of the objects that were last uh, of the last changed user um, for the objects that are included in uh, the commit. Um, if you rather have a fixed user, you select the last option and then you can. Uh, say to your tester and give it uh, give it your own email to you at gmail.com right um, so once you uh, save this um, now the commits uh, that the background job creates will automate uh, will you know use this uh, hard-coded user ID um, so as soon as you save some of the background jobs you notice up here a little icon BG uh, that indicates that this uh, would be running as uh, you know, uh, background. You can trigger it automatically here by clicking this button. Um, or of course you can uh, schedule this um, to run on a regular basis. Uh, for AbapGit it's just uh, very trivial. Um, you just use the standard AbapGit program, um, set AbapGit. Uh, and schedule it as a background job uh, in whatever frequency you like. It will automatically recognize which repositories are um, uh, set as background jobs. You can see this also if you go to the you know, from the main repository overview to the database utility. Um, there are now entries here for the background job. Uh, so all of these will be processed if you schedule this on a, on a regular basis. Um, now on the uh, you know, receiving side, you'll do exactly the, the, the same with the difference that in this case, background job will do an automatic pull. So after you set up the, uh, the, uh, the repository in AbapKit, uh, you would go in the CRM system uh, in the settings and say automatic pull, uh, save this, schedule the job, then automatically this repository will be updated with the latest things that uh, you find in Git. All right. Um, so before we go to the third scenario, a little uh, you know, intermission, intermezzo, um, just a little bit of uh, you know, promotion for ABAP Git and uh, the contributors. Um, if you, um, you know, go to uh, let me see if I get this right here, uh, to the abapkit.org site. Um, I've added now here a, a sponsor us button. Um, this, uh, for me, this has become almost a, a full-time job at times. Uh, it's, a, a, it's, it's, it's literally taking you know, hours and, and sometimes days to, to you know, debug and fix certain things. Uh, that are not working properly in Ebb Git or, or develop some uh, some new solutions, uh, refactor the code to make it more uh, you know future proof, and it lets us uh, you know plan and uh, for uh, additional enhancements in in Ebb Git. So um, uh, please do uh, you know 
notice uh, the, that there are opportunities, let's put it like this, if your company or uh, is using AppGit on a regular basis, so if you're running, for example, a big you know, conversion project from ERP to S4, where you're using AppGit, um, that there are opportunities for you to, to sponsor us. Um, we highlighted here the, the four main people, Alexander, Christian, uh, Lars, and myself. Uh, you can just click directly on this and you would end up on the uh, GitHub sponsor page. You can decide yourself how much uh, this is worth to you or if you want to have something uh, in particular done or implemented in an app of Git Enhanced. Um, I'm happy to take these things on as well. Um, if we uh, you know, get some uh, sponsorship here. And uh, you know, of course, we're not doing this uh, just by ourselves. Also, we, the four of us are probably responsible for uh, you know, way over 90% of all the, the commits in ABAP Git. There's lots of people who contribute in uh, also in other ways. It doesn't also always have to be code. Uh, it can be you know, testing things, just reporting issues, uh, and then trying out whether the, the fixes actually you know, work properly. Uh, or uh, maybe you know writing uh, some documentation or just updating uh, a few typos that you find here or there. So there, uh, thank you to to everyone. Uh, this is a community effort, and uh, you know please uh, you know hopefully uh, this whole thing that we start here or started here some years ago with AppKit um, will lead to you know. A big open source community uh, in ABAP, like we have it in so many other, uh, you know, programming languages as well. All right, um, back to to our talk. Um, the third scenario that I put together, I call it, you know, travel back in time. This is uh, something that uh, maybe not so familiar with, uh, you know, ABAP developers. Um, of course, we have some some version history for you know ABAP code. Um, as you know, every time you release a transport, you uh, the system can generate a, a new version, and then you can trans uh, compare do a version comparison um, between the different uh, different things that you have um, you know changed in the meantime. Um, now this is okay, and I've used it for for many years. But uh, it's uh, you know, actually quite limited compared to you know, what's possible uh, with Git itself. So um, I want to uh, show you a little bit how that works. Um, in, uh, in a Git repository, um, there is um, significant uh, more details available than what you classically have in, in an ABAP version history. So every time uh, somebody uh, commits a change to the repository, it leaves a trail so that I can uh, that I can also follow back, um, and then we'll see how our Git can leverage that. Um, so this was not the repository um, that I wanted to use for this. We'll use here our CI repository. Uh, we have our own solution, our Git to to continuous integration tests. And in uh, this repository, um, I uh, you know, made some, some changes. Uh, it was actually a session uh, you know, earlier today uh, with Lars, uh, where I talked about the ABAP file format. And uh, of course, this uh, had to have some impact also on our uh, continuous integration testing. Uh, and now I want to uh, you know, track back what happened there. So uh, to um, look at our uh, scenario, uh, we need, uh, I'm not sure, maybe there was some, some changes that, uh, that I made that uh, you know, uh, I need to reverse. It's this typical scenario, it used to work before, and now it doesn't anymore. Uh, and I want to go you know, back to see uh, how it was it uh, before I made the change and, and make another comparison to track, track back um, what actually um, uh, was causing now the problems. Um, and uh, the, the challenge here is uh, you, you might not even remember who made the change, why it was made. 
um, and might be also quite uh, quite a long time ago. So uh, again, can you change uh, figure out how this was done? In the ABAP version history, right, you get it only by transport. So if several people touch the object before it actually was moved uh, down the road, uh, you would have a hard hard time figuring it out. And then um, it's also a question on how granular the transports are. Is it just uh, maybe just a complete object? Was it uh, certain lines in the code that had changed? Uh, the, the transport doesn't doesn't really see. Uh, show you all these little details on, on how uh, this was done and who did it. Um, so uh, if you are, for example, in GitHub, um, you can I'll know or remember um, that there was here a change uh, made to this uh, ABAP class. And when I click on it, of course, I see the whole code. Um, we have a little features called Git blame. And uh, it's just like, uh, kind of a naughty name, right? Um, like who actually was responsible for uh, for something? And it splits the, um, the the display in two parts. On the you see the code on one side, and then on the other side you see line by line when was the last change and who did it. And then um, you can actually see, uh, and that's the the also a key difference. Every commit, right? Every um, change that you have in a Git repository has uh, typically a description, at least a, a, a one you know, liner. Uh, but if you're you know, making bigger changes, it's always good to describe it in a bit more details. So in this case, uh, let's see um, if I find actually here AFF. Um, let's see the things highlighted. Yeah, there were some changes here. Um, actually, I made <laughs> uh, everything here, uh, this simple example. But um, you can see there were a bunch of things, uh, you know, throughout this class, and I can see uh, it wasn't actually that long ago. Six days ago, um, I made this change, and uh, you know, now I know who made this change with the ABAP file formats here. Um, but I uh, now want to also show you a different way to find this, and then we go back to ABAP Git um, to. Uh, try to reverse the change. So a uh, different way to look at all of these skits is on the, uh, these commits is at the, on the first page, uh, you find here the com complete commit history. So in this case, for this whole uh, repository, we had 244 commits. Um, and uh, you see them uh, listed in you know, reverse chronological order. And in this case, it wasn't that long ago, um, the commit was uh, just six days ago that we just identified contained these ABAP file format changes. Um, and each of them has this uh, you know, commit ID. And since I want to re reverse what was just done in uh, this particular one, um, I'll grab the commit that was just before that. So in this case here, this October 7th one, I just copy um, the, the ID into the clipboard. And now I can go um, into ABAP Git and look at my CI repository. And in this case, I'm going to the settings uh, on the remote tab. And currently I'm viewing the main branch, but I can also switch directly to one of the commits. Um, I can just paste the one that I uh, had out of uh, you know GitHub, uh, save the changes. This okay, successfully saved. Go back. It will serialize all objects again. And now I see the uh, basically the comparison to the state that the Git repository was in on the commit that I just selected, compared to what was in my system, which was the the latest state. Um, now, um, the one that I was interested in was this report category. I don't want to reverse everything that was that, that happens instead, just the part that was in the report category. Um, so I can see the diffs again. Uh, here you see all these changes that I made for this ABAP file format. Um, 
but I'm, I'm not sure you know, whether it worked properly. There were some issues. So I just want to reverse this particular one, but leave all the others um, as they were before. Uh, and this is done with the so-called selective pull. Uh, under the advanced menu, um, I can do a selective pull. It will list all the things that have changed. And then I can say, oh, I just want to have this report category, for example, uh, back in my system. OK. And uh, let me refresh this. Oh, oh thank God. Start this again, something. Mess this up. There we go. Now we have only the, the four changes that happened since, but my you know, report category is back to the way it was. And uh, you know, if, I, if I don't like it, uh, I want to, it was actually all okay. I figured out what was wrong, fixed it, um, go back to, uh, to the main branch again. Uh, now you can see, ah, yeah, that is the report category that I just pulled from the other commit. And now the changes are reversed. So the new report is, uh, is now in the re back into remote. And to get it back like, into here, I can do the selected pull and I'm back on the latest main branch. All right. Um, that was the uh, git blame and showing you the commit history. So now as a, uh, as a final point, um, I call it like feel the fear and do it anyway. Uh, it's, uh, it's something that uh, happens like so many times and you actually see it in, in SAP coding as well. Uh, it said that, that fear that I, I cannot delete anything, right? I, and I need to keep it, I just, uh, you know, uh, instead of refactoring it properly and uh, just deleting all the old stuff, you find it as comments left in the code forever. And then if somebody didn't delete it uh, in the first time, uh, you know, nobody is going back to, to actually clean it up later. Um, so if the scenario is that you actually have to refactor uh, some of the code and, and maybe it will, uh, you know, take uh, or a lot longer core, uh, uh, you know, several months in a big project, um, you, you, maybe you don't even know if all the changes are going to work properly. So that's why you start commenting things out, right? And just leave all the code in there. And then later on, um, right, uh, you, the whole thing ends up being a big, big mess, has been transported already. So uh, it works, uh, but nobody uh, you know, cares about the maintenance and uh, you know, clean app app. And uh, you end up with like a, a big mess. Um, so that's uh, one of the scenarios. And then there is this other one. Um, so can you refactor it without leaving a big mess? Uh, and as a bonus scenario, uh, maybe you find yourself in this situation, right? Uh, as a company, you know, you, you're cutting expenses. Uh, get, unfortunately, you have to, you know, fire some of pe some people. Um, and then there is you know, this, you know, not so nice person that actually was uh, kicked out and he <laughs> deletes some of the code that is in your development system. And then, oh my God, right? How are we going to get this back? Uh, you know, if you install a, the system from a backup, I lose all the changes that they had otherwise, or, or maybe it wasn't even transported. I can't even get it from another system and it's all gone. Um, so uh, the challenge is, you know, how do we restore our developments? Now I can go back into, um, into my developer system. I'll use this as an example. I'll just look at some of the code, uh, what looks interesting. Just play a little bit of a game. I'll just take here this, um, you know, uh, controller that looks like a fancy program, and I'm this uh, guy who just got fired. And oh, I love this. I'll just delete it. Blah blah blah. Gone. Right. So now, how am I going to get it back? Right. Of course. Um, now I have it all in, in a Git repository and nothing can happen to it. I right? can go back to it. Uh, it's outside of the, the ABAP system. I don't need an individual you know, you know, backup to restore, just the little parts that I want, just like uh, I showed you before um, with going back to a commit. I can, of course, just uh, reinst uh, reinstall this, uh, whatever I deleted. 
and just go back and uh, bring it back to life. Um, I actually had this uh, you know, discussion with uh, you know, somebody in, in the Ever Git forum who was uh, afraid to, uh, you know, trying to figure out how to uh, you know, conserve one of the function groups that he uh, developed, but it didn't need in the new, uh, in his final uh, you know, solution. It was just for historical purposes. And he came up with all sort of, oh, I need to have, you know, two different repositories or some branching strategy. Nothing is necessary, right? You just do the activity in your existing repository and the Git um, server with, this, uh, with the commit history will track all the changes, including all the deletions that you made. So you don't have to be afraid to you know, delete objects that you don't need anymore, because at any time, in, uh, any point in time in the future, you can just go and uh, you know, bring it back into your system. And with the selective pull, uh, you can pick them object by object in whatever way you want. And of course, the same is true for any kind of comments that you have in your code or little uh, you know, methods or, or parts that you don't need anymore. Really, just go ahead, delete it. Um, and uh, you know, leave it in, in your code in a clean state, uh, rather than having these uh, these messy scenarios where you uh, have tons of pages of comments, uh, just old ABAP code that uh, doesn't even execute anything anymore. All right, so that was um, it. Um, we just back up all your Git repositories, do regular commits leave the descriptions uh, in each of your commits and uh, certainly in pull requests. And uh, then uh, somebody can do a git blame um, to track back what happened at what point in time. And if you actually uh, you know, get into a situation where somebody deletes something, maybe it wasn't malicious, maybe it was just was accidental. Um, yeah, he, didn't, he thought it wasn't used anymore, but then it was called dynamically from somewhere else, right? Uh, it doesn't show up in a way use list, for example, but uh, you know somebody deleted it anyway. Um, with a Git repository, you are uh, you know in uh, this good place. Um, one more thing I didn't show you: you can actually travel uh, forward in time as well. I showed you commits going back. Um, there's also the option to, uh, and this is a uh, bit uh, dependent on where your repositories are located. If they are on uh, GitHub, I think, and I think we also support GitLab with that, you can also jump directly to a pull request. So not just uh, changes that happened in the past, these are changes that haven't made it into your main branch um, or in, uh, yet. Uh, they might be um, you know, just stuck in a pull request so far and not merged yet. So in Git, you can also jump to a pull request, right? Um, and you can see here, um, it's actually uh, coming out of a, a different branch in this repository. Um, and then when I go back and have a look, I can see uh, what has changed. So you can also travel forward. I, uh, the, uh, what I figured out not too long ago is that these pull requests uh, can actually be in the draft state. Um, so they don't have to be uh, you know, ready to be merged even. Uh, so if somebody else uh, made changes, uh, you can, uh, and it's still you know, in, in draft, you can also bring them into your um, Git, uh, Git uh, the same way. And uh, on uh, the top of that, it works also with all the forks of the same repository. So if the pull request is not within the same repository, but coming out of a fork that somebody created, uh, you can bring it in the, uh, the same way as well. All right. So that was it. A um, little bit uh, faster. Uh, I'll give you some uh, some time back. Uh, thanks for, for listening. Um, if you want to get in touch with me, uh, you can either send me an email or you find me on Twitter. Uh, or GitHub. Um, if you want to have regular interactions, it's also good to, uh, for you to um, join our uh, Slack community. Uh, you can find that on the abapgit, uh, dot, uh, you know, uh, abapgit GitHub repository page. There's a little button at the top. Just click that to join the Slack. 
and then uh, I'll have an uh, opportunity to chat online as well. Thanks very much, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the conference. I uh, certainly listened to uh, some of the talks. It was uh, beautiful just as last year, uh, and I hope we'll have many more of these events, maybe also in a smaller format somewhere. Thank you. See you. Yes, thank you, Mark. Uh, perfect. Really mind blowing. I, I also learned something new. Also, I, I use up a bit uh, very intensive.